Hey guys, it's Steph here again today, and today is uh, a book haul for you guys. This is going to be my first book haul for the year, and I do plan to do these uh, quarterly, or at least semi-annually. So, um, I have decided that I'm going to do an unhaul video as well, because there are a lot of books that I have received from uh, pen pals, family, things like that that I have read, I don't want anymore, or books that I received that I will never read. And I figure it's better to donate them than to just let them sit on my shelf and collect dust. So now I'm finally ordering books that I want to read or that I think I want to read. Um, so I, once I do my unhaul, I will also start to have more haul videos. Um, this haul, however, is my Christmas money haul slash birthday uh, money haul. Because I did get some birthday money already from... Um, a family member that I won't see before my birthday. So she gave it to me on Christmas, which was super sweet of her to do. Um, so, without further ado, we're going to cut right into this, baby. It did take this quite a lot longer than I expected it to. Because I ordered these uh, right after Christmas. Um, literally like the 27th um, and it took a lot longer than I thought because the last time I ordered from them um, I got it in like a week so it has been a little bit more than a week um, but so far you know I came home today wasn't expecting it because I was like ah, it's gonna take a couple more weeks and then I came home and ta-da there it was so here we go. I'm actually going to put it on the ground so that it's easier for me to uh, show you the books. So, okay. So we don't need this. Oh my goodness, they look so beautiful. Okay, so this is my order form here. That's how many books I bought. <laughs> I just wanted to show you really quick. Um, so I ended up actually ordering. Actually, I'm not sure when I ordered. I think it was like the 27th or 28th. Might have been a little bit later, but I bought it on Boxing Day or like when they were doing their Boxing Day sale. So I actually saved $15. So I bought like 20 books or so and I only paid like $42 for them. So it was like really a good deal. So let's just get into them. Um, I will try to remember which ones that I paid like 99 cents for versus the ones that I um, actually like put money into. Um, actually, I think I might have a cheat sheet here. It does tell you. Yes, it does. So here we go. We're going to use this as my little cheat sheet. All right. So up first is, um, yes. Yeah, so this book was 99 cents. This is The Inventor's Secret by Andrea Kramer. Um, this is like, um, a steampunk kind of book. I did read the, um, like introduction to it or like the summary to it. Thought it sounded really awesome. Um, so let me just read you the back of the book. It says, The tables have turned in a world where Britannia, Br Britannia rules the colonies with an iron fist and revolutionaries are hung for treason, treason and group of rebels risk everything to fight against a future that could kill them all. So I was really excited. Um, there is a second book in the series. However, it was not on the book deposit or the book outlet. Um, but I was really excited to read this, and it was only 99 cents, so I thought, oh, why not? Like, how can you pass up 99 cents? And I just love the, um, chapter pages. So, it's really exciting. So, that is book one. Next up is The Damned, which was 79 cents, which I was like, absurd, 79 cents. But it says, Danny Orchard survived the fire that claimed the life of his twin sister, Ashley. He then went on to write a best-selling memoir about going to heaven and back, but despite the resulting fame and fortune, he's never been able to enjoy his second chance at life. Ash won't let him. In life, Danny's seemingly charming and mag magnetic twin was actually a deeply troubled soul with privately ter terrorized her family, and death didn't change her wicked ways. So, it sounded really intriguing to me. This is by um, Andrew... Piper, Piper, I think is how it's pronounced. And for 79 cents, I was not going to pass it up because it sounds like such a really good book. Next up is A Girl Called Fearless, which is a 79 cent book. Um, this is, let's see, it says, Abby Rivera 
has the normal life of a privileged teen growing up in L.A., at least as normal as any girl's life is, th is these days. After a synthetic hormone and beef killed 50 million American women 10 years ago, only young girls, old women, men, and boys are left to pick up the pieces. So I thought that was a really cool, like, aspect to a story. So I figured for the price, I would just pick it up and read it and try it out. Because I don't really read books like this very often, but this book is by Katherine Linka. Um, and again, it was 79 cents. I don't know if there's still any left because there was only like five left. But yeah, I hope you guys check this out because it sounds like it's going to be a really, really good book. Next up is a book that I have been hearing about um, so much. And this book was, let me see. Um, this book was six thirty nine, so this was one of my um, this was one of my more expensive books that I bought because I did buy. Oh, let me get the sticker off of here. Oh, I hate stickers on my books. Um, I did buy a few books that were uh, six dollars or more. Um, I don't usually buy books like that because I like to use the book outlet for the fact that it is cheap. But I saw Bookables talking about this and a couple other people. Um, this is The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. And it says, The Swan Sisters arrived in Sparrow, Oregon, Oregon in 1822. Uh, Marguerite, the oldest, had long auburn locks, full lips, and a sharp jaw. Aurora, the middle sister, boasted soft waves of hair and half a bright full moon eyes. And Hazel, the youngest sister, was the plain, plainest of the three. Each was beautiful and each was misunderstood. A year later, the townspeople executed the Swan Sisters for the crimes of witchcraft, placing a curse on the small town of Sparrow, a curse that has never been broken until now. Um, so it kind of gave me like Hocus Pocus vibes. So I was like really excited to read it and I love this cover. It's like holographic. It's so really, it's so cute. And I'm really excited to read it because it is very um, much hyped since I can't talk today. It was a very hyped book on booktube. So I thought why not add it to my collection. Uh, and next up is another $1.49 book. This is The Boys of Fire and Ash by Megan M Mick Isaac. Um, so this book is basically about these boys that actually live in a volcano that is still active. Um, and it says, abandoned at birth, they dwell in a volcanic pit far, far removed from the outside world. No one inside the pit knows where, where's, what's, excuse me, what's beyond the forest that surrounds it. No one has ever come back to tell them until now. So again, really intriguing book. I thought it was worth the read for $1.49. You can't really beat the price. Um, and it sounds like something that I would like to read. Because I don't, like again, I don't read these kind of books. And my goal this year was to read outside of my normal reading, so I figured why not start now. The next book was an $8.99 book, but I have really been wanting this book for a long time, so I decided to just get the money out and just buy it. So this is the Starlight Starlit Wood. It's new fairy tales. It's a, an anthology of a bunch of different authors, um, and they're like fairy tales that are that have a new age spin on them. Um, so I was really excited to kind of like grab it. I've been seeing it on there for a while and I have seen it circulating around booktube and uh, bookstagram for quite a while. So I decided to grab my own copy. I absolutely love how the cover or the, the spine looks like an old book. It's going to look super cute on my shelf. It does say for a century storytellers have crafted timeless tales that have always found a place in our hearts. Here, a new generation of critically acclaimed, award-winning writers have taken up their mantle and shaped trans traditional and extraordinary fairy tales into something startling and electrifying. So it's going to be really awesome because I love um, fairy tale retellings, which you'll notice a couple more books coming up that I kind of went for that theme this time buying books. But I really, really, really love fairy tale retellings. Um, Alex Flynn is one of my favorite authors with story tower or like, you know, fairy tale retelling. So yeah, so that's that book. Next up is Burn What Will Burn. Um, this was a 99 cent um, book. This is by CB McKenzie. Um, it's, it is, uh, let's see, let me tell you about it. Uh, Bob Reynolds doesn't recognize the body in the creek, but he does recognize the danger of it. He's a newcomer to town, not entirely welcome and not entirely on good footing with the sheriff. So far, he's kept his head down, mostly over the bar at the at the crow's nest, but his he has interests other than drinking and spending his inheritance, including one 
that goes by the name Tammy Faye Smith and who may have caught the sheriff's eye as well. So it sounds like it's a little bit of like a love story mixed with like a mystery um, kind of like they found a body in a creek kind of story. So it's a very short book um, and I'm kind of going for short books for a while so that I can actually read more this year like I want. Um, and again, for I think nine. What was how much was it? No, ninety nine cents. Uh, you can't beat it. Um. So next up is um the Dark Between by Sonia Gensler. This book was a seventy nine cent book. It says at the turn of the twentieth century, spiritualism and seances are all the rage even in the scholarly town of Cambridge, England. While mediums dupe the grief-stricken, a group of local fringe scientists seek to <coughs> seek seeks the bridge the gap to the spirit world by investigating the dark corners of the human mind. Sounds like a good book to me. Um, so kind of like a psychological story. Sorry, my hair is a mess today. Um, kind of like a, 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 you know, there is actually two other books by her. There is another book called Ghost Light that I really, really want to read. I do like paranormal books, so this is going to be a great addition to my reads for this year. Next up is The Body Institute, which is 79 cents. It's by Carol Riggs. Um, pretty much this is like... Um, she's taking over another person's body. So it kind of reminds me of the show that I'm watching... Uh, that I was watching on Netflix about like um, you have a stack in your neck and when you die as long as that stack doesn't get messed up you get put into a sleeve which is like another like um, scientist made body so I figured this book was kind of similar to that and I was kind of really intrigued by it um, but it says thanks to cutting edge technology Morgan contemporary take over another girl's body get her in shape and then return to her own body leaving her client slimmer more toned and feeling great only there are a few catches so it sounds really cool. Um, from what I have read and what I've seen for reviews, she um, starts to have the memories of the person that she inhabits. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much all I know about it. But it definitely seems like a really good book. Next up is Burning Midnight by Will McIntosh. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm tired of reading the thing. Um, so this was a dollar forty nine. It says, "Sully is a sphere dweller at a flea market. It doesn't pay much." Alex Holiday's store have muscled, have muscled out most of the independent sellers, but it helps him and his mom make rent. No one knows where the brilliant colored spheres come from. One day they were just there, hidden all over the earth like huge gemstones. So I thought it sounded pretty cool, um, kind of like a futuristic book. So I just grabbed it. It was cheap, and I thought, why not? You know. Um, the next book that I have been eagerly awaiting to get for quite a while is Never Ever by Sarah Sadie. I think that's how you pronounce her name. Um, and I'll read you what it says in the back. It says, Wiley Dalton always dreamed of staying young forever. Then she meets Finn, who makes her dream a reality. Life can't get much better than partying all day on a tropical island where nobody ages past 17, can it? So it's like a retelling of Peter Pan. Um, <clears throat> which again... I love retellings of, like, uh, fairy tales and things like that. So, this is definitely going to be a good book. I have had this on my wish list on Amazon for a long time. And I ended up getting this for $2.19. Um, so I was really excited. This is part of their Scratch and Dent sale. But I don't see anything wrong with this book. It's going to look lovely on my shelf. So, next up, I did, um, <coughs> go through, um, I did get this. It's like Before We Go Extinct <clears throat> by Karen Rivers. I have seen this book um, hyped quite a bit on BookTube, so I decided to grab it. I don't know much about it, but let me read you a little bit of the inside cover. <clears throat> it says, JC, who goes by the nickname Sharky, has been having a hard time ever since his best friend died in front of him in what might or might not have been an accident fall accidental fall off a skyscraper. Shell-shocked, Sharky spends countless hours holed up in his room obsessively watching documentaries about sharks and climate change and texting his dead friend. Sounds crazy. Um, but it sounds like something I might want to read. It does sound like it might have a little, a couple trigger points in it. However, I am looking to read more books like that. Um, cause I have never read a book that really touches me. Like I've read some really, really good books, but, um, I wanted to read stuff that speaks to me, um, and speaks to other people. 
and this was really hyped for a long time so I definitely wanted to try to read it all right so next up I believe is um we have charmed by Mikkel Kreis it is the sequel to Hexed, so I am going to try to find the first book in the series. Um, it says, Indy has spent the last few weeks frantically searching for Paige. She's tried every spell imaginable, but witchcraft has gotten her nowhere. And she's going crazy with guilt, despite that her warlock boyfriend Bishop tells her Indy knows it's her fault her best friend was kidnapped by the priority. Um, so I do want to find Hexed, however, it's not on the book outlet, so I may end up having to buy it from Amazon, but I thought this book sounded really good, and I love, like, paranormal books about, like, witchcraft, werewolves, vampires, and things like that, so this is definitely going to be an awesome read for me. And then this book here, um, is All the Ever Afters, The Untold Story of Cinderella Stepmother by Danielle Teller. Um, I have seen this book again around booktube and bookstagram for a while so I thought I should grab it because again I really really love retellings and I thought that it's a cool perspective to hear from Cinderella's stepmother which I've never heard I've never read a book written by another character it's always been like a retelling of Cinderella or the stepsisters um however this is about the mother so it's going to be really cool it was a little bit more of an expensive book um I think I paid like um I think I paid like $7.99. Yeah, I paid $7.99 for it. So it was a little bit more on the pricier side because it was, it's still like 70% off the regular price. Um, but yeah, so I'm really excited to read that. So then I decided to get crazy with the anthologies because I wanted to read more of those this year. So next up are a lot of the anthologies that I picked up and these were all like $5.89, $7.99, $8.99, um, stuff like that. So they were a little bit more pricey, but they do have more stories in them. So I thought they'd be a really cool addition. Sorry, my chair is annoying. This is The Mystery Box, edited by Brad Metzler. It has stories by Steve Barry, Lauren Lippman, Tom Rob Smith, James O'Born, Charles Todd, Catherine Neville, R.L. Stein. So this is pretty much just an anthology of all kinds of mystery stories. Um, and I thought that it'd be really cool because I have not read a lot of mystery stories. So I thought that this anthology would be really cool to read. Next up, I saw this book and I thought, oh my goodness, um, there is a second book to it, but I did not buy it for, you know, money reasons. But it says, my mother, she killed me. My father, he ate me. 40 new fairy tales. Um, it is edited by Kate Bernenheimer. Um, again, love fairy tale retelling. So I thought that um, it would be really cool to read. Um, there is a second book. How I to Like I said, I will grab it someday, but I wasn't able to get it this time. Next up is... Uh, Fall of Poppies, Stories of Love and Great War. Um, it has authors like Jen Jessica Brockmull, Hazel Grainer, Evangeline Holland, Kate uh, Kerrigan, Heather Webb, things like that. Um, so again, it's Stories of Love and War, and I thought uh, it's really cool because I've never really read stories like that, so I thought it would be a cool addition. Another thing that I'm really super obsessed with are Urban Legends. Um, so I ended up getting the Too Good to Be True, The Colossal Book of Urban Legends. Um, so again, another anthology about urban legends. And I've had this on my wish list for Amazon forever. And I decided to just pick it up. I did end up paying a little bit more for this. I think I paid like six, yeah, six thirty nine for it. Um, but still, it's originally priced at like $19. So I did save quite a bit on it. And there is two more books here. And they are not anthologies. They're just... Um, you know, books. <laughs> this book was 99 cents. It's City on Fire. Um, I absolutely love this cover, by the way. It's so cute. And this is by Garth Risk Halleberg. Um, it says, New York City, 1976. Meet Reagan and William Hamilton Sweeney, estranged heirs to one of the city's great fortunes, Keith and Mercer, the men who, for better or worse, love them. Char Char Charlie and Samantha, two suburban teenagers seduced by downtown punk scene, an obsessive magazine reporter and his idealistic neighbor and the detective trying to figure out what any of them have to do with the shooting in Central Park. Um, it is a quite large book, but there are pictures throughout the book. It is illustrated a couple times, um, but there's also this really cool feature. I saw it in a uh, review, so I decided that I definitely need to grab it. There is parts in this book that are actually written like a journal entry from the people in the book. 
So that was a cool addition and I thought I definitely needed to add it to my collection. And last but not least is Beware That Girl. Watch me now, pay a close attention, survival of the fittest baby. That's what it says on the back. This is by Teresa Totten. Um, it says, the haves, the have-nots. Kate O'Brien appears to be a have-not. Her, her whole life has been a series of setbacks. She has to snake her way out of some more sinister than others. But she determines to change that. She's book smart. She's street smart. Oh, and she's also a masterful liar. So I thought that it sounded pretty awesome. And I wanted to add it to my collection. And I only paid like 79 cents for it, I think. Um, but yeah, can't really beat that. So that is my massive book haul. Um, I think I ended up getting like... Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. 12, 14, about 21 books. So that's my biggest book haul so far. Um, but I did get a lot of books that are like anthologies that I can read. And um, I'm really excited to read some of these books and add them to my collection. I have been on a book buying spree because I decided to get rid of a lot of my books um, about a year ago when I decided I wasn't going to read much anymore and I was going to go completely digital. But then I just missed the smell of a real book. Like, Sounds weird, but I love the feel and the thought of having a book in my hand. Um, but anyway, so that's long enough video for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this book um, haul, and I hope you stayed till the end. Um, if you're new here, hello. Please subscribe. There's going to be a lot more awesome videos. If you're back, thank you for watching again, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!